In this video, I'll be showing how to make a tornado machine. This is an advanced project that requires a fair amount of skill and materials, but the result is worth it. This machine creates a stable vortex at the flick of a switch. This is made visible thanks to water vapor, which is generated by an array of ultrasonic fog machines. As a side effect, this is quite an efficient humidifier. I don't think you'll ever see a humidifier that's more interesting than this. With that purpose aside, the primary reason I made this tornado machine is for various science demonstrations I do throughout the year, and of course simply because I find it super cool and I wanted one. There are other people who have made similar tornado machines before, but what makes my design unique, as far as I know, is that it only uses a single fan for both the updraft as well as the rotation of the vortex. This is a 6-inch inline ventilation fan with a variable speed control. For its size, this sort of fan moves a lot more air than most, and at its lower settings it should be very quiet. This is important since I want to run this machine in my house. Okay, so getting into this build, the first thing I need to find is something that will act as an upper housing for this machine, and this will determine what the final diameter is. I had this old trash can lying around, and with a diameter of around 20 inches, I figure that should be an adequate size. I first cut the bottom of this bin off using my angle grinder, which I find to work really well for cutting plastics. It will eventually need to be much shorter than what I'm cutting it to now, but I can determine the exact measurements once I have more pieces made to match this to. The entire upper half of the machine that the garbage can is the first piece in will be a sealed area. And so I need to now work on a piece that will seal the bottom opening of what I just cut. For that purpose, I'll be using a piece of PVC board, and this is left over from my parabolic mirror project. I'm not entirely finished with my ideas for parabolic mirrors, but if I make more, I have some other designs that I'd like to try, so this board is no longer going to be used. I'll be cutting this plate into a donut shape, with the inside hole being just the right diameter to squeeze over the output of my ventilation fan. The outside of the donut will be cut to fit inside the garbage can, as tight as I can make it. It turns out that the PVC is quite difficult to cut, because the friction from the blade actually melts it, and so it reseals as soon as the blade is passed through. I did eventually get the pieces to break free with the help of a mallet, but then I needed to re-trim the edges to clean them up. This will be the underside of the head of this machine, and the legs will mount directly to the plate. For this, I will be using five one-inch PVC couplings, and I'll do my best to space them evenly around the outside diameter of this plate, about a half inch from the edge. Air will be flowing above this plate, and then down into these couplings and into the legs, so I need to drill holes through the plate to mount them. With the couplings about measured out, I used a can of spray paint to mark where I need to drill the holes. I then took the plate over to my drill press and got that part sorted out. I found the couplings were actually a little bit cone-shaped, a little wider on one end than the other. So when I used PVC cement and primer to mount them, I could press them all the way through the holes I made in the plate, and they would stop flush on the edge. With this complete, I can set this plate aside and wait for the cement to cure, while I move on to another part. I have this 3 inch by 4 inch PVC adapter, which I will be using to redirect some of the air from the fan down into the legs on the tornado machine. I need it to fit down inside the fan's body, so that some of the air is directed to the outside of the coupling, and some of the air will go through the center. Since my ventilation fan has a fin running through the inside, the PVC adapter needs to have a slit cut in one side so it fits over this fin. Now using this adapter as a measuring tool, I can mark out with the widest end the size of a hole that I will need to cut in the bottom of my garbage can. Remember this is going to be the top of the housing, so the PVC adapter is going to extend through the top of the machine. At this point, I'm about ready to cut this bin down to its final size, and to determine that size, I will press the PVC plate that I've made down into the bin as far as it will go. If you're using a bin that's similar to mine, the plate should stop when it hits the handholds that are protruding into the bottom. 
This leaves about a 2 or 3 inch gap between the PVC plate and the very bottom of the bin. Plenty of room for air to flow between them. With the excess material on the bin trimmed down to be flush with the PVC, I can now remove this plate because I'm not quite done with it yet. For aesthetics, I'll paint the plate black on the side that will be showing. I probably should have also painted the bottom of the trash can at this same time, but for whatever reason I decided not to. The plate is now finished, so I can press it over the top of the output of the fan, and to make sure the fan never falls out, I'll secure it with a large hose clamp and some rubber strips. The entire assembly can now be permanently reinstalled into the upper housing. The two pieces are sealed together with either hot glue or silicone. I'm now ready to move on to the legs of this machine. I'm using five legs, all made from one inch diameter PVC pipe and exactly three and a half feet in length. The legs need to be exactly the same length or the machine won't sit level. I clamped a board to my workbench to help me draw a straight line down the side of each leg. The legs will be pressurized with excess air from the fan and holes drilled down this line will be used to direct the air toward the center of the machine in a rotational pattern. This is the rotation that will control the speed, stability, and direction of the vortex. I drilled 30 holes in each leg, spaced 1 inch apart, starting 2 inches from one end and ending 10 inches from the other. The last 10 inches will be parallel with the fan once the legs are installed, so there's no need for holes to go all the way to the top. At just less than 1 8 inch in diameter each, the combined area of these 30 holes should be a close match to the size of the opening of the 1 inch pipe, so this will make good use of all the available airflow. With all the holes drilled, I can now give the legs a paint job, and I will also paint five end caps to act as a foot for each one. The legs are then pressed into the couplings on the upper housing. They should not be glued in place because they will need to be able to rotate to provide adjustments. There's just one more step to finish the main part of the machine, and that's to plug in the reducer that we made earlier into the top. Some glue is then used to seal around this coupling, which will create a seal between the air that is ejected from the top of the machine creating an updraft, and the air that is forced down into the legs to provide rotation. We're now ready to plug in the fan and fire this up for a test. I've adjusted each leg so the holes are blowing air in a clockwise pattern toward the center of the machine. I have my large fog machine here which I will use as a test just to see if I can get the vortex to form. It seems like this is working well, so I'm ready to make a more permanent solution using my ultrasonic foggers which at first I installed in the bottom of this bucket. These need to be submerged in water to function, and they tend to splash so I put a lid over the top of this for now. I don't really like the look of this, so I eventually replaced it with a coffee can, but I used this for my initial tests. At the moment this vortex is not especially stable because being completely open, it's very susceptible to cross currents in the air. Stability greatly improves if you block off one or two sides of the machine, which you can see I tested here with this plastic garbage bag. By having a black background, the visibility of the vortex also becomes much better. My permanent solution for this was to get some corrugated black plastic signboard and zip tie it between three of the supports. This blocks off two of the five openings and almost entirely cures any instability. And we are now finished. I really love how this machine turned out. All you have to do is plug it in and it'll run all day long. You just have to occasionally refill the water above the foggers. I only added one more small addition, and that was an LED backlight to the machine. Anytime you're working with fog or smoke, you can make it much more visible by adding a backlight. Hi everyone, thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. This has been one of the larger projects that I've ever filmed on my channel, so thanks for sticking around until the end. Whenever I film a project like this, my goal is to make it the best video on the subject that exists and I hope that I've done that for this video. If this video helps you build your own tornado machine, please let me know in the comments and send me your photos, send me your videos. That's what I like to see, that my projects have helped to inspire your own creations. 
And even if they haven't, I hope this video has at least been entertaining and maybe slightly educational. If you do enjoy my videos, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. Especially videos as long as this one are completely uneconomical to produce. I lose money on them every single time. So I need your Patreon support if I'm going to continue making videos like this one. So anyway, you can find a link to my Patreon page in the video description below. And if you do support me, thank you very much. And thank you again for watching this video. Thank you for your comments, your likes, and your shares. And I'll see you next time.